Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening to you all around the world. This is Reverend Essie of New Birth Ministries Church Online wishing you victory, Yeshua, love, joy, peace, wit, wealth, success, patience, virtue, good health, money, mercy, grace, support, rock, wisdom, positivity, abundance, prosperity, greatness, and Yahweh. Church online every Sunday at 10 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. As for those who cannot attend the usual brick and mortar service at the time, for various reasons, such as sick and shut in, transportation troubles, and so forth, know that we're praying for you and that God would send you favor quickly. Also remember, troubles don't last always, my friend. You have the victory. Amen. And check out our new website at RevSE.org. God bless. everyone. Let's open this up with prayer. Amen. Father God, we bless you. Baruch Atah Hashem Adonai. We bless you and we thank you for being our God and loving us. Jesus, we thank you for everything that you did just for us. And we also pray that more people would understand exactly what you did and why you did it. You did it for them. We pray right now on this day, Palm Sunday, celebrating Palm Sunday and Passover, which is the most beautiful time, one of the most beautiful times of the year. And we ask that you take the scales off of people's eyes so that they'll have a closer relationship with you, so they'll understand you. The devil has so many people blinded, Lord. We are praying right now that you take the scales off of their eyes And we bind all the bewitchment that has been sent their way to stop them from understanding that you are a God of love, you are a God of success, you are a God of joy, happiness, and peace, and you also want your people to have the same thing. The way this world is nowadays, God, we need more peace, we need more love, and it's there. You sent it for us. We just need to tell other people about it. I pray right now, Lord, that you anoint more, you open more hearts and, and, and you know, anoint more people to go out into the world and tell them about the love of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, and the teacher, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, that wants to talk to them, to speak to their hearts, so that they could, so he could drown out all of the other voices in this world that are trying to take over and ruining people's minds. Lord, we lift up to you today. The brokenhearted, those that are uh, mourning, those that have nowhere to live, no food to eat, no shoes on their feet, the children in this human uh, trafficking thing that's going on, Lord God, the children, not just the children, but everyone um, who is being used and abused, may they see that Jesus died so that they can be set free just as Israel was set free in this instant, in this instance that we are um, going to talk about today, as Israel set free, may others who want to be grafted in, may others who hear about the love of Jesus Christ be set free as well, not just in different countries because of different circumstances, not just human trafficking, but to be set free from drugs, free from alcohol free from the spirit of torment, free from the spirit of infirmity, free from the mocking spirits, free from all of the spirits that astro, astro projection, 
okay, the uninvited spirits, the evil spirits that want to trip them up. We bind them right now in your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Use me today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed Palm Sunday to you today and always. I pray that your day is peaceful and full of love, sharing, and caring. We could always use some of that. Amen. We all need more of that in this world. Um, you know, I miss not having palms on Sunday like we used to do when we had our church in Houston, PA, and California, PA. The brothers and sisters there love them. We absolutely love them. And I hope you have yours today. Amen. I hope you go to your church. I know you may be listening to this. Uh, some of you may have to. And I thank God for that. I'm, I thank God to be a servant to be able to do this. But those who also listen to this, I know some that listen and they go to their church. God bless you. And, and uh, get, a, get, a, get a palm for me. <laughs> Amen. Get a palm for me. Whether you can bring it to me or not, get a palm for me. Amen. I used to be able to make the leaves, um, the palm leaves, into a cross. But it's been so long now, I I may need some refreshing, folks. We sure had a great time in those days making and distributing them. It seems that you get a million. Did you ever notice it seems that you get a million of those things out of one section? When me and my daughter used to do them, um, we used to have church in um, the elderly building, a high-rise building, every Sunday. And when we did them, for Palm Sunday, we got so we were surprised how long it one leaf lasted. Amen. It's like a miracle. It's a, you know, um, uh, it, you know, it would take Jesus right to multiply, <laughs> amen, to multiply the blessings like that. Amen. Another miracle with the tree branch, which is on a more positive note, actually, unlike the tree that Jesus had to curse to the root for pretending to look flourishing, but it wasn't. Everybody remember that story? Amen. The parable of the fig tree. In fact, the fig tree parable even turned out to be positive, actually, for us, because it was a lesson for us to learn about the power within us. I use the phrase pretending to look flourishing because Jesus spoke to the tree, and the tree heard him, and it obeyed. A tree obeyed the Lord. What's our excuse? In fact, it's the same chapter that we're in now. We're going to be studying today, uh, Matthew 21, and we're going to be going back to um, Exodus 2, Matthew 21, 18 to 20. If a tree couldn't hear, why would Jesus speak to it? That's something to think about. Everyone and everything obeys the voice of Jesus, and those who refuse have a very warm place to live for an eternity, guys. No air conditioning, no water. Amen. Unbelievers will not be able to use God's super utilities in hell. As Flip Wilson's character Geraldine used to say, what you see is what you get. And in this case, everlasting and uncontrollable fire. Hallelujah. So let's open our swords to Matthew chapter 21. And I will read um, from 1 to 11. Verse 1, uh, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. And it reads like this. Hmm. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, B-E-T-H-P-H-A-G-E, pronounces Bethphage. Some people say Bethphage, um, and it means house of figs. It was at the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. Now, before I go on, I want to let you know that Bethphage is a Christian religious site on a Mount of Olives east of historical Jerusalem. Bethphage is mentioned in the New Testament as the place in ancient Israel from which Jesus sent his disciples to find the colt. Amen. The Synoptic Gospels mention it as being close to Bethany. Bethphage is about two kilometers from the modern village of al Azaria, which maybe some of you may have heard mentioned like on a 700 Club or on the news or something. Amen. 
Matthew 21, 3 says, And if anyone says anything to you, you should say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as, Jeru- as Jesus commanded them. They bought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Hence why we have uh, the uh, palms today. And the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. Amen. The prophet from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Amen. Yes. (laughs) May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We have the power of God in us. Your brother Joshua from the Old Testament spoke to the Son and told it to stay up until Israel won the battle and the sun stayed. And Israel won the battle. Nature speaks and nature hears as well. How else did God create everything? It hears. Genesis 1. God said, God said, God said. And it happened. Amen. God spoke to dirt and trees. And birds and animals appeared. Think about that. Speak to your problems, folks, and the power of God will cause you to rise above every situation that you may be going through, and your blessings shall, will, are going to appear. You just have to have faith in God, have faith that he's not a man that he should lie, and everything that his word says is truth. Palm Sunday and Passover are very important events in Hebrew history and for the believers who are grafted in, us, amen. Matthew 21 tells the account of how Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey as the people threw their clothes and palms on the ground beneath him. That is such a high honor to have someone place their clothes on the ground for you to walk upon, as men used to do women in the old days. You remember when men used to lay their coats down uh, over mud, uh, mud or water puddles so women can walk over them? That's a blessing. Amen. That means that you're very highly respected. By someone who feels that the things on the ground that can harm you should be covered up in order that you'll be safe. They gave it their best. The people that were there with Jesus gave it their best when they saw him approaching their area. Folks, we should also give it our best when we see and mainly feel Jesus when he with his Holy Spirit approaches. Do as he says. Allow God to use you. Drown out all the other voices around you. And give God your best. We should give God our best time. Amen. Our our best thoughts. Think about Think on him. Think about him. Think about what he did for you. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 21, we see that Jesus told the disciples to specifically go into the village to find an ass tied and a colt with her, and he told them to loose them and bring them to him. And if he and he says, if anybody asks you what you're doing, just tell them that the Lord has need of them. And he said, once you say that, straightway they'll send them. Jesus knew ahead of time that these people will allow the disciples to bring what he needed for what he was about to do. He knew. See, Jesus can see in the past, present, and the future. We have to remember that. Amen. Jesus knows what you are going through, and he knows how it's going to turn out. He wants to see if you're going to remain on his side and be a winner. Hallelujah. You can't lose. It was that Dr. Uh, Ike. Dr. Frederick Eichenberger, 
He used to always say, you can't use with the stuff I use. You can't lose with the stuff I use. Amen. You can't lose with Jesus. Jesus can see your victories before you even begin to experience the battle. I will say that again. Jesus can see your victories before you even begin to experience the battle. Jesus was actually fulfilling prophecy as in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout out, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Amen. We serve an awesome God who would not tell us to be humble if he wasn't humble himself. He was an excellent example for us. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Too many people are trying to lift themselves up without being humble first. He could have had any strong and strapping horse that he wanted instead of a slow and sometimes stubborn donkey. Jesus made an example for people in the future who'd be riding to church events or those evangelists who travel from state to state, not in a Mercedes or Beamer but in a Ford Pinto or AMC Gremlin with a busted water pump. He was our example for that. Amen? Notice that he didn't even separate the mother donkey from the child, the colt, even though it was going to happen to him. Separation from his mother. Jesus even had compassion on animals. It was a mother Probably, okay, it was a mother, definitely, actually, not probably, because he specifically used the female gender terminology. More than proves that females can be used by Jesus. Amen. (laughs) The triumphant, victorious ride into Jerusalem, he used a female. Hallelujah. Jesus had a huge following. If you look in verse 9, it uses the word multitudes. The people began to shout, Son of David, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, which means save, I pray, rescue, Savior. Okay, Hosanna in the highest. And for them to call him Son of David, they recognized that he was a leader. Many of them followed Jesus around and witnessed miracles and were healed by him. They saw his power firsthand. They were believers. Amen which we should be as well. We say we're believers. We somewhere in our lives should have seen or are seeing the power of God in our lives. If you say you're a believer and you don't see God operating in your your life, something is amiss. Hallelujah. If any of you were ever in entertainment like I was, okay, we would call some of these people, there's a terminology called roadies. Amen. They were roadies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people out there would get that. A roadie is a person who is employed by a touring band of musicians to set up and maintain equipment. Hallelujah. This is the way spiritual leaders today, amen, to help them, to set things up for them, to carry their Bibles, okay, the dust off the podium, whatever, whatever. He need, Get the water, whatever she needs, you know, get her a fan, whatever. We're supposed to help them, get them whatever they need. They're already laboring in the word, amen? They don't need to labor physically as well. I'm very afraid that leaders are getting disrespected anymore, and I do believe that it's because of the wannabes who make it look bad for everybody else. Church, where has our discernment gone? Why is the church so easily led anymore? Why are we so easily led by sleight of hand? People can't even tell the difference anymore. Then if you think about it, sleight of hand is what magicians do. Selah? Amen? Which means think about that. Ponder on that. Amen? Are we listening to God's preachers? God's prophets? Or are we following magicians? Hmm. Leaders nowadays have learned how to speak, when to get quieter, or when to get louder, how to construct their sentences and so forth, having no anointing whatsoever, and steady talking about others Who has it and who doesn't? They learn how to look and dress, speak and do the proverbial crescendos, but God's not in it. They've even learned what hairstyles and clothes 
to where that will attract the listener instead of allowing the word of God to attract the listener. Some people are trying to attract people more to them than they are trying to attract people to the cross and to Jesus, the work of the cross. Hallelujah. And people fall for it, sadly, hook, line, and sinker. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem with all of the people surrounding him, giving him proper respect, as they should have, there were, of course, inescapable questions. People were wanting to know who he was, of course. They were saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. You know, as I was researching this years ago, I found that Jesus was doing healings amongst all the people in the little towns near Jerusalem. Okay? Research is important. This is why we should do so. It helps you to gain understanding and wisdom. This is how they knew him because of the beautiful things that he was doing, he had done and was doing for them. And just think, he didn't even have to use sleight of hand, which is only temporal anyway, temporal magic or entertainment. He was literally giving people a newness they had not experienced before, straight from the throne of God, straight from the golden and sapphire throne. Hallelujah. How beautiful. How beautiful God is. Amen. The woke ones, as they say, quote unquote, woke, W-O-K-E, the woke ones followed him. The hard-hearted or spiritually blind or doubting ones didn't. Just like today. Some people may appreciate what you do for them, and others will not, just like the lepers who got healed. And only one came back to thank him. Only one came back. You can see that in Luke seventeen twelve. If you want to write that down, Luke seventeen twelve. And, you know, that means something to me. Ten lepers, Jesus healed ten lepers, and only one came back to thank him. That's one-tenth. Amen. A tenth gave God glory and thanks. What else can you think of that is one-tenth that gives God glory and thanks? Amen. Hallelujah. I digress. Further in the chapter, when he's turning the tables on the money changers in the temple, telling them that they had turned his father's house into a den of thieves, he quotes another prophecy to them from Psalm chapter 8. If you look in Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, it says, Yeah, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Jesus loves the little children, just like the song says. Hallelujah. Jesus loves the little children of the world. He does. While reading Matthew chapter 21, I cannot help but to discern by the Holy Spirit that Jesus must have thought about the Roman soldiers gambling for his special garment as he was beaten, spit upon, slapped, WWB, which is walking while bleeding, hanging on the cross, dying for you and me, while watching the people in this temple exchanging goods and animals, and God only knows what else for money. It's all about money, folks, right? And nowadays, some some people even have the 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 uh, Mac machines in their churches. You know. Now here's the catch, okay? I preached a few Sundays ago, in my get out of the system message, that this world is being run by the devil's commerce. The act of bullying, uh, well, act, the act of buying and selling, okay? Buying and selling. It was not God's intention for us to buy or to sell, okay? The enemy tells his imps who is to get the money and who's not going to get the money. Amen? That is not God's way of providing for his people. In fact, one of God's names is Jehovah Jireh. God our provider. You can see that in Genesis twenty two fourteen. 14. God would never have people use his temple, which, as Jesus said, is a place of prayer as a marketplace. He would never do that. That's confusion. And where confusion is, there's every evil work. God, okay, created the temple for him to be worshipped in, not anything earthly, not anything fleshly, not anything sensual. Actually, the marketplace and the temple were to be two separate entities. 
There is nowhere in the Bible where it tells us that Jesus went into the temple to buy anything. When he was a teenager, he went into the temple to read the word of God to his elders. They even said that they never heard anybody speak like he did so strongly and wisely. There was no selling of doves, no coins, no gold, no silver, no notes, just Jesus and the word. And that's how it should be today. (laughs) Amen. Just Jesus and the word. Amen. Just, nothing else, just Jesus and the word. Anything that uh, glorifies and, and glorifies God can be in the temple. Amen. That is your talent. That's, that's singing, playing instruments, and, uh, you know, cooking for the homeless. Anything, not charging the homeless, <laughs> cooking for the homeless. If it glorifies God, if it is of God, by him. It is to be used in the temple. Amen? It can be used in the temple. And the law has changed nowadays. We went from the old schoolmaster of the law to the freedom of Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, on to Passover. Passover is a celebration of when the Jews were freed from slavery. Uh, slavery. You, you can look that in Exodus chapters 3 to 14. Amen? God brought ten plagues upon the Egyptians until they agreed to let the Jews go from their land. They were all forced into back-breaking labor, building cities of treasure houses for Pharaoh. There you go, treasure houses. (laughs) Okay, and even dying in Egypt as well. Egypt was a very frightening place. After Moses was released from being a prince because he was outed as being a Jew, he married one of Jethro's daughters, was called by God to lead the Hebrews and continued to tell hard-hearted Pharaoh to let God's people go. Pharaoh repeatedly refused each and every request. Aaron's staff turned into a snake and swallowed the magic sticks (laughs) of the Egyptian sorcerers. There is no power equal to our God's power, our Father's power. Amen? Pharaoh still refuses to let the Jews go. Moses warns him that God will smite Egypt. Pharaoh remains untouched, hard-hearted, didn't care. God begins to send a series of plagues upon the Egyptians in the throes of each plague. Pharaoh promises to let the children of Israel go, but he reneges the moment the affliction is removed. Aaron strikes the Nile, the water turns to blood. Two, swarms of frogs overrun the land. Three, lice infest all the men and beasts. Still, Pharaoh remains stubborn. Four, hordes of flies invade the cities. Five, a pestilence kills the domestic animals. You you know, you have to be just, part of my expression, stupid to continue to bump your head up against a brick wall after all this is happening to your people. Pharaoh wasn't a very good pharaoh. Number six, painful boils afflict the Egyptians. Amen. Number seven, fire and ice combine to descend from the skies as a devastating hail. Still, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he would not let the children of Israel go. As God had said to Moses, the people of Egypt have suffered too much. They beg Pharaoh, to, they beg Pharaoh, just let them go. <laughs> they were begging him, just let them go. Amen. Can you imagine? We can't take anymore. When Moses comes to warn Pharaoh of the eighth plague, Pharaoh says, You say that you want to go serve your God? I'll let the men go as long as the women and children stay behind. Moses says, No, we must all go men, women, and children, cattle, and herds. Guess what? Pharaoh once again refuses. The next plague descends upon Egypt. Number eight, a swarm of locusts devour all the crops and greenery. Number nine, a thick palpable darkness envelops the land. Amen. The Israelites are instructed to bring a Passover offering to God. 
while all this is happening, okay, see, as a child of God, you will always be, always be ahead of the enemy, no matter what it looks like. You already won. You're always ahead of the enemy. Hallelujah. A lamb or a kid is to be slaughtered and its blood sprinkled on the doorposts and lintel of every Israelite home so that God sh- uh, should pass over these homes when he comes to kill the Egyptian firstborn. The roasted meat of the offering is to be eaten that night together with matzah, which is unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. Hallelujah. Amen. Then God brings the tenth plague upon Egypt. Number ten. All the firstborn of Egypt were killed at the stroke of midnight of the 15th of the month of Nisan. Exodus chapter 12. God tells Moses how to perform the Passover by getting a lamb without blemish, kill it, and place its blood by using hyssop. This is an herb. You dip it into it. And on the two side posts and upper post of each house's door and remain inside. Just stay inside. When the enemy, when the death angel comes, when when you stay in, mind your business, do what God tells you to do, and stay inside. Amen? You're covered by the blood of Jesus. You don't walk out in it, okay? You don't walk out in it and say, hey, you know, I'm, God loves me. I'm a child of God. I can take that. No. Do what God tells you to do. You're covered by the blood. Go inside. Remain quiet and mind your business and let God do his work. Amen. I hope that's a word to somebody. There's a word. Amen. Amen. They also have to eat the meat roasted in fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And no raw meat like we practically eat today, which is most likely not kosher anyway, right? 12-12, okay? God says that he'll pass through the land of Egypt that night and will smite all the firstborn in the land both man and beast, because he is he is the Lord. He's God. He can do what he wants to do. Nobody can tell God what to do. Amen? Thank God. The blood shall be a token upon the houses where they were, and when he sees it, he will pass over them. Pass over. That's where we get the word. Pesach, P-A-S-A-C-H, means to hop over. God tells them to place the blood on the post because without a foundation, there is no door. If you don't have a foundation, okay, if you don't know the word and you don't love and and share and care and pray and, and, you know, help give, there's no door in your life. Not a proper one anyway. There might be a door, but not Jesus Christ. Jesus is love. Amen. Now, the Exodus. Soon after allowing the children of Israel to depart from Egypt, Pharaoh chases after them to force their return. And the Israelites find themselves trapped between Pharaoh's armies and the sea. Amen. God tells Moses to raise his staff over the water. The sea splits to allow the Israelites to pass through and then closes over the pursuing Egyptians. Moses and the children of Israel sing a song of praise and gratitude to God, which we should do every day of our lives, all the time, whether you feel like it or whether you don't. Amen. He knows how you're feeling. You can't hide how you feel. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is not the account of the Red Sea splitting for God's people. If he split, this is not the only account, actually, okay, of the Red Sea splitting for God's people. If he split their barriers, then he can do it for you, too. Amen? And here's some key symbols of the Passover, the lamb. Just as Israel was saved by the blood of the Paschal lamb, we are saved by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the lamb. Amen? Our Passover, who was sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. It's important to point out the following parallels between the Paschal Lamb and the life of Christ, which is one. Both were firstborn without blemish. Exodus 12, 5. Number two, both were to have no broken bones. The Paschal Lamb was to be prepared whole. Same as Jesus. See Exodus 12, 46. Number three, both the Paschal Lamb and Christ's blood were to be used as a token and a sign of redemption. See Exodus 12, 13. Number four, both the Paschal lambs and Christ's blood was spilled 
the blood of the Paschal lamb flowed into the basin. Exodus 12:22. Now, the cedar, an unbroken roasted shank bone, now represents the lamb and its sacrifice. Pronounced cedar, actually, um, S-E-D-E-R. Okay, they have unleavened bread, the matzah. It symbolizes the haste in which the Israelites left Egypt. They didn't have any time to wait for their bread dough to rise, right? Leaven referred to the scriptures and by church leaders as good, both a good symbol, as in the parable of the leaven of Matthew, uh, in uh, Matthew 13, 33, and a symbol for sin, as in Matthew 16, 6, is used to increase the mass of bread dough prior to baking. In Hebrew, the word matzah means sweet. The Hebrew word for unleavened bread is shomatz, C-H-O-M-A-T-Z, which also means sour or bitter. The same leavening agents that make bread rise can also spoil if they ferment too long. Thus the Apostle Paul said, Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. See, when you become a new creature in Christ, something should change. Amen? Hallelujah. Purge out the old leaven. Don't be spoiled. And I feel there's a lot of spoiled Christians going around saying they're saved and they're still doing the same thing they used to do before they got saved. That leaven has been in there too long. Amen. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's 1 Corinthians 5, verses 7 to 8. As part of the preparation for the Passover, Jews remove all the leavened bread from its ingredients, from their homes even. They neither eat nor have leavened items in their homes for the entire eight-day period. Imagine doing that. Amen? You can see that in Exodus twelve nineteen. At the beginning of the modem cedar, three pieces of matzah are wrapped in a cloth and set aside for the use during the ceremony. Jews have a number of different interpretations of what these three matzah okay, plural form, represent. Some say the matzah symbolize the three divisions of Judaism, priests, Levites, and Israelites united as one. Others say they represent the three great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We may see allusions to the three personages of the Godhead, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and there is no other. <laughs> triune is not in the Bible, but triune God. Three, amen. This last interpretation is compelling as we see how these three matzot are used. After the first cup of wine, which a lot of people use, grape juice, and the washing of the hands, we see that in John 13, verses 4 to 5, the middle of the three matzot, which is considered the sun, is broken into two pieces and a large piece and a smaller one. The large piece, called the Africaman, the dessert, is wrapped in a napkin, and hidden in a room for later use. After the meal is consumed, the children search the room for the missing Africaman. When the children find it, the leader of the Seder must pay a ransom to the child who found it. After the leader pays the ransom, the Africaman can be eaten by all. It is the last thing eaten at the Seder. At this point in the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the sacrament. Jesus and his disciples ate the Africaman, which represented his body, and drank the third cup of the wine, the cup of redemption, which represented his blood. You look in Luke 22, 19 to 20. Now, there's something called substantiation, um, uh, the law of substantiation, and that's when people are saying that whenever you take the blood um, and, and when you take the cup and the cracker, okay, they say that once you take that, it actually becomes... Jesus' is bl real blood and Jesus' is real body, and that's not true because it is actually a representation of his blood and his body. Amen? Other symbols in their meaning? And I'm almost through. Hallelujah. Other foods traditionally eaten during the modern Seder, as well as their significance, bitter herbs. You, you ever see the plates that they have that have different sections on the plate? Okay, and they put different things in each section, and this is what they mean. They have bitter herbs. It reminds them of the bitterness of slavery and 
in Egypt, not only in Egypt, but the bitterness of sin in our lives. Sin should be bitter to us. Amen. It shouldn't. If it's still pleasurable to you, you need to talk to God. <laughs> if there's something that needs, you, there has to be a change there. You shouldn't want to sin. Not on purpose anyway. Amen. Every day I ask God to forgive me of my sins. Because there's something in the Old Testament that called the, um, uh, they had a sin offering. Okay. Um, for when people sinned and didn't know that they had. Amen. Then they have roasted eggs. It represents the second offering, known as the festival or pilgrim offering. The egg may also represent new life or the resurrection. And then there's haroset, H-A-R-O-S-E-T, which is a mixture of apples, dates, nuts, and grapes that represent the mortar that they used with the, in the bricks when they were building the Egyptian cities. And then greens, dipped in salt water, which represents tears. Tears symbolize, it symbolizes the arrival of spring or the newness of life out of bondage, but it also symbolizes the tears that they went through and all of that mess that they were going through with Egypt and the Pharaoh. And, and that's the tears that the people went through and had to be saved from. Amen. It's a rich symbolism of the first Passover and the Jewish observance can be used to teach about the Lord's use of types and symbols, particularly in the Old Testament, and to help better understand the scriptures. Look, you don't have to keep tears. You don't have I tell you, the Bible says God keeps our tears in a bottle. Amen. He knows every single tear that you've cried. He knows why. He knows what you're going through. He sees it all. As I always tell people, you just have to have patience for it to work out. Either you're going to hurry up and try to do it yourself and fail, or you have patience and sit back and let God take the wheel and win. Amen. And be blessed. Only through God can you be blessed. Hallelujah. This is the time of the year. One of the times of the year, actually, where you give, do your best, show thankfulness, be content, hallelujah, be grateful. It's best to be grateful with God. He loves grateful children. How many of us out there maybe had some children that maybe weren't so grateful, didn't appreciate things, you know? God wants you to appreciate what he's done for you, and that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest, our Savior. Are you saved? Now's the time to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. With all that's going on in the world, you need a friend. And that can be Jesus, if you allow him. He's your helper, and his Holy Spirit is your comforter. He sent him to us that we may be comforted and taught. If you're not saved, just repeat the Romans road after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I'm so sorry, Lord. I believe that you died on the cross and rose three days later from the dead just for me. And I accept what you've done. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now go find a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church and learn of him. What kind of church would it be if the Holy Ghost wasn't there? It would be a dead church, Ichabod, amen? (laughs) Find a living church, amen, that studies the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hallelujah. Your new life just started, amen? All old things are gone away. God throws them as far as the east is from the west. Now, go live, go laugh, go love. Go eat, go drink, go be merry, hallelujah, and just enjoy the peace and the joy of God. Don't focus so much on outer influences. Look inside. God is in there. He's waiting for you. He loves to talk to. Talk to him. Talk to him a lot. Tell him everything. Amen.
Hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you for coming on today, and I pray that your special celebrations for Palm Sunday and Passover go beautifully. That you have a good time. You have a wonderful time with your family. Try not to be alone. Okay, no man is an island and no man stands alone. Spend it with somebody. Amen. And praise the Lord while you're doing it. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Reverend Essie signing off. God bless you all and have a beautiful, beautiful day.